Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to explain what is system pause command and why it is considered a bad practice and why some people say that you should never use it. And I'm going to demonstrate everything that I talk about using this simple C++ program that I have written in my Visual Studio. So if you look at this program here, you will notice that there is no system pause command here. And then you will notice also that this is the most simple Hello World program that just writes out this message to our console. So let's see what is going to happen if I run this program. Okay, did you notice what just happened? Our program started and then it closed very, very quickly and we were not able to see the output in our console. So we were not able to see if this message here indeed had been outputted to our console. So now your question might be, is that an error? Is the fact that when I run my program and it closes so quickly, is that a bug, a mistake? The answer is no, because when your program starts, it is going to need CPU in order to be executed, and then it is going to take memory as well, so it is going to take certain computer resources. So it's only logical that once your program finishes and executes all of the lines that it has, that program should end and return those resources back to your computer so that they can be reused by other programs. So that is exactly what happens when I run this program. Okay, so your program starts here at this first line of our main function, and then it writes out this message here, and then it ends here. Okay, so this open curly bracket is the first line of your program, and then this closed curly bracket of your main function is the last line of your program. And again, that is exactly what happens when I start this program. So it opens here and then it writes out this message and then it closes at this line of code here. So now your question might be, okay, Salina, but that happens so quickly and I am not able to read the output in my console. So how can I do that? How can I pause my program so that I am able to review the output in my console? And the answer is that that is exactly the reason why some people use system pause command. So if I say system pause like this, okay, and if I run my program now, as you can see, the execution of my program has been paused and here I am able to read the output in my console. So here is hello world text and then it also has this message here which says press any key to continue. Now, what this message here means, it means that now your program is waiting for you to press a key, and only after you press a key, your program is going to continue. And this line of code here, this eight line, which says system pause, is the line where the execution of your program has been paused, and from here it will continue after you press a key. So the only thing left to do after this line of code here is this closed curly bracket of your main function, which represents the end of your program. So that means that after I press a key here, my program is going to end, which will result in closing the console. So let's demonstrate that. Okay, as you could see, our program now has closed. Um, now, another thing that I want to show you is this text here. This text which says, press any key to continue. If you are bothered by this text and if you don't want to see it, what you can do is you can say here, pause greater than null or pause greater than zero. Okay, and if I run my program again, as you can see, it says, hello world, and that press any, t any key to continue text is not shown anymore, but the program still behaves the same, which means that it is still waiting for you to press a key in order to continue the execution of the program. Okay, so let's close this now. So here I have introduced you with system pause command, and you have seen how the program behaves with and without it. Now, I want to give you some more details and I want to explain some potential issues and problems that can happen if you use system pause command. So, what is system pause? System is a function that is going to invoke your operating system and it is going to say, hey operating system, can you please run this pause program? 
Now, what a pause program does is that it pauses the execution of its parent program, which is this program here. And it waits for you to press a key. And only after you press a key, this pause program will end. And only then the execution will return to your parent program. And your parent program will continue its execution. Now, the problem with this system pause is that it is not portable, which means that it is a platform specific hack that is going to work only for Windows operating system. So if you tried to run this command here or on Linux or on Mac operating systems, it is not going to work. And then I also believe that it is not going to work for most online compilers. So um, it is, again, as I said, it is a platform specific hack for Windows operating system. Um, now your question might be, Okay, Saldina, but how can I pause the execution of my program so that I am able to read the output in my console so that my program does not close very fast? And here I want to give you three different ways to do that. And then if you are familiar with some other ways, feel free to share them in the comments section. So the first way, instead of using this system pause command, which is, as we already said, a platform dependent hack that works only on Windows, is to use a functionality that is defined in C++ language itself. And that is cin.get function. Okay, now what this cin.get function does is that it waits for you to press enter and then it continues the execution of your program. So if I run my program, as you can see, the execution has been paused and it waits for me to press enter. So if I do that, the execution is going to continue and my console will close. So that is what this cin.get achieved. Um, now, this, as I already said, is not platform dependent, but it is a functionality that is defined in C++ language itself, which means that it is not going to work only on Windows, but it will work on other operating systems as well. Now, a problem with this is that this is not the main purpose of C in .get, but it's just a way for you to achieve that behavior that I just demonstrated, so to pause the execution of your program. And then if you want me to make a video, a separate video where I explain this C in .get functionality and its use, you can let me know in the comments down below and I will make a separate video about C in .get in C++. So that is the first way for you to pause the execution of your program. The second approach that I have seen people use is a breakpoint. So let's demonstrate what that means. If I delete this cin.get, we expect our program to behave the same way that it did at the beginning, which means to start and then to close very quickly. So how am I going to pause the execution of my program? The answer is by using a breakpoint. So on this vertical line here in my Visual Studio, I will press the line where I want to add a breakpoint to. And that is going to be this line here. So just before my program closes, I want to pause it. So if I run my program now, as you can see, the execution of my program has been paused. So we are able to read the console. And then here is where it has been paused. And this button here, if you noticed, it says continue. So only after I press this button here, the execution of my program will continue. And my program will continue from this line of code here, which means that it will end and it will close the console. So let's do that. If I press continue, as you could see, the console has been closed. Now, breakpoints are used in order to debug your program, which means to follow the execution of your program to investigate what is happening during that ex execution and to fix and discover some potential bugs. And also you can add more than one breakpoint to your program if you want and if you need. So I can add another breakpoint here, for example. Um, and, and then also another very important thing is that these breakpoints that you see here, the execution of your program will stop at this breakpoint and then at this breakpoint here, only if you run it by using this option. So only if you say start debugging or if you press F5 key. If you decide to run your program by using this 
start without debugging or if you press Control plus F5, then your program is not going to stop at any break point. So that was the second way for you to pause the execution of your program and that was by using break points. So let's remove these two and now I want to show you the third way for you to pause the execution of your program without using system pause command. The third option is already built in inside Visual Studio and it is this option here, so debug and then start without debugging or you can also press Control plus F5 keys and if you decide to run your program by using this start without debugging option as I already said, your program is not going to pause at any breakpoints, but your program as well will pause at the end just before closing the console. So you will be able to read the output in your console. So if I press start without debugging, as you can see, our program paused and we can read the output in our console. And then it also says press any key to continue. So if I press a key, my program will continue and the console will close. So those were some suggestions that you can use in order to pause the execution of your program and read the output in your console. And then also if you have some other suggestions, you can put them in the comments section. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And then also if you have any questions or if you have any ideas and suggestions for my future videos, you can leave those in the comment section. And if you want to learn more about programming and if you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe and click the bell icon as well so that you get a notification from me every time that I publish a new video. And I publish new videos every single week. And then also, if you use some other social media like Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, uh, you can tag me on your stories if you decide to use my videos to learn programming because I love watching your stories. And I will leave my other social media accounts in the description of this video. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!